Hello, in this video, we're going to be talking about synaptic transverse. So let's not waste any of your time. Let's get right to it. Now, when we're talking synaptic transverse, uh, what we're really talking about is that unique, specialized synapses that occur. Uh, and we're going to be talking about three, the cholinergic, uh, the um, uh, adrenogenic, and the gabagenic uh, situations and what's going on there. Uh, but they, you're going to, some terms you're going to see, uh, excitatory, which means it's going to increase action, inhibitory, which means it's going to decrease uh, action, and of course, as always, the presynaptic uh, neuron will be releasing neurotransmitters and they will the effect they will have on will be uh, on the post uh, synaptic uh, neuron but as I mentioned there are three types uh, that we're going to look at and uh, the cholinergic and the adrenogenic, those are excitatory, and the inhibitory is going to be the gabagenic um, uh, synapse. All right, so starting with the cholinergic, uh, it's as you can see, ACH is going to be its neurotransmitter. And it's looking to uh, get skeletal muscles uh, in action. Uh, that's its main focus. There are others that it can inhibit, uh, but our focus here is the excitatory aspect of it. Uh, and it's, but again, it's going to be releasing the ACH through uh, the synaptic knob. And when it does that, uh, calcium uh, is will be really calcium will enter uh, that synaptic knob. And I know the diagram is kind of small, but again, it'll be in your in your PowerPoint, and uh, as well as uh, the book. And when that happens, okay, we said this calcium is released, but then you got your traditional sodium potassium pump. Uh, the sodiums will be moving uh, in into the potassiums, then will be leaving, and of course that fires that uh, that neuron uh, to get that going. And then as that, uh, cal as that sodium enters, then it, as it mentioned, you can see the diagram with the red arrow, it kind of uh, spreads out. And then if the stimulus is strong enough, it opens up those voltage regulated ion gates, uh, causing the synaptic, the postsynaptic neuron uh, to fire. Uh, the GABA generic uh, synapse, it's an inhibitory, uh, so it means it's going to be slowing down uh, the process. And you can see the name of its neurotransmitter, which is, 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 uh, would be, is a challenge to say. Um, now, the difference with the GABA is the reason why they're inhibitory is because they, their receptors are chloride channels. Chlorine is a negative uh, anion. So it's, it's negative. So what it's going to do is when they're put inside, uh, when they're released and are taken up by the next neuron, it's going to lower the energy level uh, even lower than the negative 70 that we've, that we've spoken uh, so much about. So that's how it inhibits, it, inhibits uh, the next neuron uh, by making the number even lower than the resting so it's like a putting really putting it to uh, sleep. All 
All right, and our third uh, scenario, uh, the, the adrenine, adrenine, uh, boy, I'm having trouble with that. I'm having a tough time getting this one out. Adrenergic, uh, and even that's not right. So, uh, but following our, our diagram, we can see the steps here. Uh, it uses uh, neoreponin as its neurotransmitter, and that receptor, when the norepinephrine uh, attaches to its receptor you can see kind of step two there uh, but again this will be in your powerpoint and in the textbook it releases that protein and then that protein moves to a second messenger and its second messenger uh, in this case is uh, is camp but it can be a lot of silic amp uh, it can be a lot of different things but when it attaches to that second messenger it alters um, uh, it's a uh, shape and then it can lead into a lot of different a lot of different things as we're going to see in this next uh, slide now when that again that that G protein uh, leaves the receptor and uh, attaches to that second messenger uh, it's going to be releasing uh, when that when it attaches, it's, it's going to get to the point where it's going to be releasing different uh, elements, and those and based on what it releases, it can do a lot of different things. I mean, as you can see there, number four, multiple different effects. Uh, it can induce genetic transcription. Uh, it can there's hormones that it can produce, enzymes that it can be can be triggered there. So just basically the combination of what that second messenger is and what the purpose uh, uh, of the uh, function will kind of determine what's what's going on or what will happen next I should say so but some possibilities uh, again as I mentioned it can uh, genetic transcription getting the DNA RNA processes make some enzymes uh, metabolic changes uh, uh, lots of things can uh, can go on uh, enzymes can as I mentioned can be merged so again a lot of variability into what uh, is going on all right when you compare the adrenergic synapse uh, to the other two uh, again not only the variability of what it can uh, what it can make what enzymes it can go on uh, but it's a it's a slower process uh, as you can see there and then one molecule of that nephrinephrine can produce lots and lots of different things uh, so pretty uh, pretty diverse in its functions All right, so that's our video over uh, specific uh, synaptic transverses. Uh, we'll come back in there next time. We're going to be talking about how to stop the signal, cessation. We'll see you then.